the Native American literature. So in the Native American li literature, um, it tells about the literature before we have the modern literature. In the Native American literature, meaning the first people in America. Now, as you can see on the PowerPoint, is there is the word problem. So problem, when do you say you have a problem? Or what is a problem? Why do we have problems? So problems occur when something came up that uh, some maybe bothers you or give you stress or makes you sad or sometimes angry. It makes you anxious, it makes you sad, it makes you um, uh, sad, it makes you anxious and so on. And those uh, feelings that uh, makes you more or less productive. So what? You know, why do we have problems? Sometimes we have problems because we have these certain issues or um, certain issues or happenings that we thought that would that we thought could never be solved. So, um, before I say that, if there is no solution, then there is no problem. So, well, how do we deal with this problem? Do we um, sit over it or do we just forget it totally without even? giving a try to resolve it. So, as for me, the greatest solution to every problem is through prayer. Prayer. How do we pray? Sometimes we have... How do we pray? Uh, before, before we pray, on how we pray, just because we need to pray. Just because it is um, a compulsory to pray. Maybe here in our school, it is a compulsory or we thought it's a compulsory to pray before and after every lesson or before and after every meal. But a prayer is just like a, a way to communicate to God, a way to communicate with Mother Mary, a way to communicate with other, with, uh, with the other uh, scenes that we want to pray on. So this is a part of communication, a greatest communication to God. There is no, um, just like if, for example, if you want some, if you want to talk to someone, what do we do? We need gadgets to communicate to them. We call them, we text them, we message them. But with God, there is no other gadget. Aside from ourselves, uh, uh, aside from ourselves, we talk to God through prayers. We, and we may have a prayer that is we memorize prayers, but we also have personal prayers, which is uh, we pray not just because we have problems, but also we pray because uh, we need guidance. We pray because we are sorry. We pray because, and importantly, we pray because we are thankful thankful for everything that God is giving us, even trials, problems, blessings, everything that we are experiencing, we pray to God for guidance, for um, forgiveness, for uh, being thankful, for uh, what else? Everything that we want to say to God, we do it through prayer. Now, why we are why are we discussing prayer problem? Because the Native American literature here in the Native American literature is there is a famous legend where in um, during their time the people the people the Native American people are what do we uh, what do we what do they say is the Luwakan people is that they forgot uh, to pray or. Uh, because they, uh, their main problem during their time is a famine. Famine wherein um, they are, they have lack of food to eat. So, what is this famous legend during the Native American literature? It is called the White Buffalo Woman. So, what is this White Buffalo Woman? If you could see, if you will um, try to analyze the title itself if we have it in literal form we would we could say or we could picture out just like in our powerpoint the white buffalo one it's a white buffalo buffalo is 
like a resemblance of a carabao, a buffalo, which has uh, uh, have horns. A woman, meaning it is a uh, the gender of this white buffalo is a woman. White buffalo mean why white? If we have it figuratively, white means pure, right? Buffalo means uh, it's a strength. It for being strong. A woman, if we say that woman is the strongest first of people, and then some would say that. Now, here is the white buffalo woman. A white buffalo woman is the legend that is very sacred to the Native Americans. Why very sacred? Because here shows their, uh, their, uh, their faith, their faith on their, uh, faith on their God or sometimes they get that's just the secret one now this legend is passed down by the lakota or white over what do we what do they call the american people the north american people they are called the lakota or the sioux the sioux the s i n uh, as you can see on the powerpoint it spells as s i o u x or sioux the lakota or the sioux or the north american people so this legend is about how the people had lost the ability to communicate with the creator now because of the famine the main problem of this um, legend is their famine they have lack of foods scarcity of foods that's why because of this one um they only think of how to survive where to find food that they forgot to ask for their creator, how to communicate, to ability to create or to communicate with their creator. Now, the secret white buffalo calf woman was sent to teach the people how to pray with the pipe. Sorry, how to pray with the pipe. Now, what is this pipe? We will see later on what is this pipe that we are talking about, and also. This legend talks about how to abide in order to ensure a future with harmony, peace, and balance. Now, how the legend started? It started when the uh, when the seven secret council, or what they call the Oseti Shakowin, who went to Lakota Oyate to camp. They have, uh, they meet there to have a camp. Now, the Ita Zip Show and Without Bows are among the bands, among the safe seven sacred council, which is their chief is Standing Hollow Horn. Now, Standing Hollow Horn, because uh, they have lack of food, as I've said a while ago, uh, because of famine, they have scarcity of food, Standing hollow horn or their chief, the chief of Itazipcho and without bows, sent two young men to hunt for food. While searching for food, they saw something coming toward them that is floating, or what they called awaken, means holy. Because they saw this, this apparition floating they already know that it is a weekend or what they called holy now this um floating apparition is now what we call what they call the white buffalo woman or the tesanwi or lilawakan on their language tesanwi or lilawakan who is a carrying a large bundle and a fan of sage leaves now, one of the young men turned into ash or some say was eaten up by snake because he disrespected the Lila Wakan. If you could see, it's just like the resemblance on the Bible wherein, uh, wherein this uh, woman turned into what? To ash because he uh, she um because the the rule is that do not uh look back but she did look but look 
back. That's why she became ash. Ash or salt. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, one of the young men turned into ash. Why is that? Why, how, how did he res disrespect the Lila Wakan? Because he tried to hold the Lila Wakan. And as we can see, we said that it is a wicked or holy. It should be given with a look up, look up with the uh, with respect. Now, what about the other man? So he was um, not punished because he respected Lila Wakan. Now, this other one, this other guy, went back to the camp to tell the chief, chief of the arrival of the Lila Wakan because Lila Wakan told him, the guy, to return to their camp and tell the chief of her arrival. Now, what are the uh, that are the rules that Lila Wakan have that have told to that guy? So he told the chief that they are to put up a medicine lodge with for twenty four poles. Medicine lodge with twenty four poles. Imagine a boot camp. You see a camp wherein that pole there should be inside that medicine lodge there should be this um there there is there should be this certain altar now how did the other uh, other campers other council know knew about this one so the crier or whom they called the ayapaha announced about the coming of the sacred now after four hours a uh, four days i should say the white Bufawulu woman appeared and they started this sacred ceremony. Now, now on this uh, medicine lodge, they are to put a sacred altar or what they call the Owan Kawakan. It is, should be made of red earth with a white buffalo skull on top of it, on top of that sacred altar or the Owan Kawakan and a tree stick rock were to put in the center of the TP or the medicine lodge. So if you will see if you would have it resemblance in a church, the altar is on the center, the Owan Kawakan is the center, and it has a buffalo skull and a tree stick rock. Now, on this uh, tree stick rock, now, uh, after having this one, the Lila Wakan or Lila Wakan um, bring out the Chanunpa or the sacred pipe. And he put a Chan Shasha, a red, red willow bark tobacco inside it and he blow it up. So before she, before she um, blow the Chanunpa, um, she made a round she is encircled. Uh, she yeah, she circled inside the uh, medicine lodge in a anpetuwi style or the great sun. The form how the how the sun rotate right around the earth. It is how she uh, also rotate around the medicine lodge, and this great sun is called. The Anpetu Wi. Now, on that fire, when the uh, Lila Wakan blow this pipe, there's there came a fire. First is a fire which they call the Peta O Wihan Kashimi, or meaning a fire without end. And the smoke that came from the pipe is what they call the Tun Kashila's breath or the living breath of the great grandfather mystery. Now, why do we have this one? Why did they have this sacred ceremony? Because this shows or this is how to solve their problem. What is their problem? The famine. So uh, Lila Wakan showed them, the people, the right way to pray, the right gestures, and the right words. And after the after this um, ceremony 
after the ceremony, they have already, the, the problem was already solved. So uh, just like that one, if you have uh, they or the Lilawakan uh, teach them, taught them on how to communicate again. She reminded them on how to communicate with their theater. And after this ceremony, Lila Wakan said, Tok siya ake wakin yang tintelo or meaning. Anyone who could tell me the meaning of this one? Tok siya ake wakin yang tintelo. Remember um, Douglas MacArthur when she when sorry he said uh, when he was about to leave the country for a while he said he said i shall return right just like lila wakan one day she will also return and she said this toksha ake wakin yang titelo meaning i shall see you again Now, here comes the elements of a myth or a legend. After um, knowing the story or the legend of the Native American literature, the white buffalo woman, let's try to analyze its elements. First, let's have the character. What is a character? The characters are the main people inside the story who plays the, the who are playing in that that uh, story or legend or myth. Let's have this one. The legend of the Lila Walk, uh, the legend of the White Buffalo one, and the character is, who is the character? It is, the main character is the Lila Wakan. It, the story revolves around her, how she thought or how she reminded the people of, um, the people of the Native American, the Native Americans on how to communicate again with the creator. The setting, it is in an Lakota Oyate. And the plot and the theme, what is the theme of this one? On how to communicate with their creator. What is the point of view and style of this one? The point of view here is the third. We have different kinds of point of view. The first, the second, the third point of the first point of view is the person is uh, on how based on how you read the story the person is involved in the story itself the second per, the second point of view is that um she he is all he or she is um, involved there but she is the uh, the one um, um telling the story and the third point of view is she or he does not involve in that story uh he or she is just uh, narrating the story and what do you mean by oral tradition oral tradition it is passed from one generation to another no writings no use of paper and pen or any writing materials it just um how they uh tell the stories through mouth oral from the right side oral tradition it is based from um telling the stories through uh, verbally from one person to another now do we have any question 